Hi, my name is Lauren Cameron, and I'm going to be discussing the artist Jean Honoré Fragonard. First, let's discuss his background. From the Botanica biography, Jean Honoré Fragonard was born on April 5, 1732, in Grasse, France. He grew up in Paris, where he started off as an apprentice to a lawyer. He was then pupil to Francois Boucher, whom he flourished his artistry under. He entered the Prix de Rome and won a scholarship to study under Carl van Leeu, who was the court painter for Louis XV. Once his career took off, he was considered one of the most important French painters of the 18th century. In his career, Jean-Honoré Fragonard was a prodigiously active artist, and he produced more than 550 paintings, several thousand drawings, although many hundreds are known to be lost, and 35 etchings. He then died on August 22, 1806. His cabinet pictures mostly consisted of 17th century Dutch landscapes. I have two here. One of them is a bread shop drawing, which is this one. And here is the second one. As you can tell, they're both landscape drawings. Um, John Honoré Fragonard produced a series of red chalk drawings of the gardens and principal sites of the town that are among the most uh, greatest examples of landscape art of that century. One can presume that John Honoré Fragonard was deeply influenced by the area in which he grew up in and the places that he often visited. Most of the landscapes that he did sketch and paint were of his mother country, which is France, and most from towns and villages where he grew up and went to school. His paintings and drawings were all concentrated on landscapes, portraits, and outdoor party scenes, such as the swing, which is here. Uh -huh. This uh, is actually one of my favorite pieces that he has completed. I've talked about this piece in different assignments for this class because it just really is one of my favorite things I've seen so far. It features a lady on the swing with one shoe off in mid-swing. Um, you can see a statue at the left of what looks like could be Cupid and he's making a shing motion. Um, it also has a man in the bottom left corner who's reaching out to her and a man behind her uh, pulling a rope that's attached to the swing so she can actually get momentum to go back and forth. Um, my interpretation of this painting is that the pair are having a secret love affair and are hidden within the foliage from prying eyes. And the reason I think it's this is because I think that the statue is Cupid and he's a type of foreshadowing saying that it's a secret. Um, I also think that the amount of foliage and uh, brush and trees around them is keeping them from being seen by other people from that time. Um, the article written by Stein states that he worked with great rapidity and little blending, which gives pictorial form to the qualities of fire and genius that are so admired by contemporary collectors of that time. And this is, I think this is very true because a lot of paintings are blended to perfection and they don't really have a lot of sharp lines or um, aren't messy, but this one really does bring life to the different types of uh, foliage within the background. I think that's what makes it really stand out. And I also wanted to discuss Young Girl Reading because it showcases a detail of fabric. And I have this one here too. The creases, wrinkles, and highlights um, and colors of the girl's dress and the pillow behind her showcase his talent for perfectly painting a realistic looking fabric. Young Girl Reading does not have any foliage in the piece, which is unlike his usual paintings and drawings, and is rather simple when you compare it to the swing, but it still contains a multitude of detailing and imagery, which makes it really special. I also wanted to include the painting of The Little Park. Um, for me, this one showcased his extreme 
talent for detail. Um, just in the landscape and the foliage, um, it's just amazing how much detail he can put into his work. Um, it's also another candid snapshot into that century, and a lot of his paintings are candids. There's not really one that's a simple, like, just one pose, like most of the artists did have. Um, all of John Honoré Fragonard's work um, captures the viewer's attention by his use of details, his color palette, and light and shadows, and he really makes the subjects in his art stand out to the viewer. As an overall look, John Honoré Fragonard's art contains smaller elements of colors, similar elements of color scheme, imagery, and tone. Almost all of his pieces are done in the same hue, with them all being not too light and not too dark when compared with one another.